61. A client receiving peritoneal dialysis is found to have a temperature of 101.8 degrees Fahrenheit, 38.8 degrees Celsius, abdominal pain, and cloudy outflow. What is the nurse's priority action? A. Slow the infusion rate. B. Flush the catheter with sterile saline. C. Notify the healthcare provider immediately. D. Document the findings and continue monitoring. Answer. C. Notify the healthcare provider immediately. Rationale. These findings strongly indicate peritonitis, the most serious and common complication of peritoneal dialysis. Fever, abdominal pain, and cloudy outflow are hallmark signs. Prompt intervention is necessary to start antibiotics and prevent sepsis. Flushing the catheter or slowing the rate without medical order may worsen the condition. This is not a monitor and wait situation. Immediate notification is required. Strategy. When you see cloudy dialysate, fever, or pain in peritoneal dialysis, think peritonitis and act fast. On NCLEX, notify provider immediately is correct when a serious complication is already happening, not when it is only suspected. 62. A nurse is caring for a client with a potassium level of 6.7 milligree equivalent per liter. Which medication should the nurse prepare to administer first? A. Furosemide B. Sodium bicarbonate C. Calcium gluconate D. k -exalate. Answer. C. Calcium gluconate Rationale. In severe hyperkalemia, the immediate concern is cardiac stability. Calcium gluconate does not lower potassium but stabilizes cardiac cell membranes, reducing the risk of arrhythmias. Other drugs, like k sodium bicarb, insulin with glucose, or furosemide, help remove or shift potassium, but they take longer to act. Calcium gluconate is used first to prevent deadly cardiac events while other treatments are being prepared. Strategy When dealing with life-threatening electrolyte imbalances, the priority is to protect the heart first. Think stabilize first, fix second. Calcium gluconate is always first in symptomatic or critical hyperkalemia. 63. A client with chronic kidney disease is placed on a low-protein diet. What is the best explanation the nurse can provide for this restriction? A. Protein increases your calcium levels. B. It helps your kidneys conserve energy. C. It reduces waste products that your kidneys cannot remove. D. Protein causes dehydration in kidney patients. Answer. C. It reduces waste products that your kidneys cannot remove. Rationale. In CKD, the kidneys are unable to eliminate urea and other nitrogenous waste from protein metabolism. A low-protein diet reduces the production of these wastes, helping delay progression and symptoms of uremia. While protein is essential for health, moderation is key, especially in clients not yet on dialysis. High calcium or dehydration isn't the issue here. Strategy Understand why each dietary restriction exists. When asked to explain something to a patient, the correct answer should simplify complex physiology without being inaccurate. 64. A client with CKD is receiving phosphate binders. When should the nurse instruct the client to take them? A. At bedtime. B. On an empty stomach. C. With meals. D. Two hours after meals. Answer. C. With meals. Rationale. 
Phosphate binders, like calcium acetate or cevelomer, work by binding dietary phosphate in the gastrointestinal tract, preventing its absorption. They must be taken with meals to be effective. Taking them at other times, before or after meals, does not prevent phosphate absorption, rendering them ineffective. Strategy Medication timing is a frequent NCLEX focus. When a med interacts with dietary components like phosphate, timing relative to meals is crucial. With meals, binds dietary phosphate. 65. A client with acute kidney injury is producing only 200 milliliters of urine in 24 hours. What phase of AKI is this? A. Initiation phase. B. Diuretic phase. C. Oliguric phase. D. Recovery phase. Answer. C. Oliguric phase. Rationale. The oliguric phase of AKI is characterized by low urine output, but less than 400 milliliters per day, and signs of fluid overload, hyperkalemia, acidosis, and rising BUN creatinine. This phase can last days to weeks. Diuretic phase follows when urine output increases, but kidneys may still have difficulty concentrating urine. The initiation phase is early and subtle, and recovery phase is the final stage. Strategy NCLEX may test phases of AKI. Learn the progression. 1. Initiation 2. Oliguric 3. Diuretic 4. Recovery Match urine output and labs to the correct phase. 66. A client with CKD is prescribed Sevilamir hydrochloride. What is the primary purpose of this medication? A. To prevent constipation. B. To treat anemia. C. To reduce phosphate levels. D. To lower potassium levels. Answer. C. To reduce phosphate levels. Rationale. Sevilamir hydrochloride is a non-calcium phosphate binder. It binds dietary phosphate in the gut, reducing its absorption and helping to manage hyperphosphatemia in clients with CKD. It does not treat anemia or potassium imbalances and may actually cause constipation as a side effect. Strategy. Match drug purpose to the lab abnormality. When seeing Sevilamir, think phosphate control without calcium overload. It's often used in place of calcium-based binders. 67. Which statement by a client with CKD indicates a need for further teaching? A. Olive oil, bananas, and oranges. B. I weigh myself every morning to monitor fluid retention. C. I can take over-the-counter NSAIDs for joint pain. D. I keep track of my blood pressure every day. Answer. C. I can take over-the-counter NSAIDs for joint pain. Rationale. NSAIDs, like ibuprofen, are nephrotoxic and should be avoided in clients with any degree of kidney disease. They can reduce renal perfusion, worsen kidney function, and interact with antihypertensive drugs. The other statements reflect appropriate self-care, such as monitoring potassium-rich foods, weight, fluid status, and BP. Strategy On NCLEX, when a question says, which statement indicates a need for teaching, find the unsafe or incorrect self-care practice. NSAID use is a major red flag in renal patients. 68. A nurse is caring for a client with uremic frost. 
Which nursing intervention is most appropriate? A. Provide warm compresses to the skin. B. Administer oral antihistamines. C. Encourage increased protein intake. D. Scrub the skin vigorously with soap. Answer. B. Administer oral antihistamines. Rationale. Uremic frost is a rare but distinctive finding in severe uremia, where urea crystals deposit on the skin, leading to itching and irritation. Antihistamines can reduce pruritus. Gentle skin care and moisturizing are also helpful. Vigorous scrubbing can cause skin breakdown. Protein intake should be moderate, not increased. Strategy When a symptom is uremia-related, the NCLEX often tests comfort and skin integrity management. Think, reduce itching safely. 69. A nurse is caring for a client one hour after AV fistula placement. Which action is most important? A. Elevate the affected limb. B. Assess for distal pulse and capillary refill. C. Administer heparin to prevent clotting. D. Apply a warm compress over the site. Answer. B. Assess for distal pulse and capillary refill. Rationale. After AV fistula creation, vascular patency and perfusion distal to the site must be assessed immediately and regularly. Loss of pulse or poor capillary refill indicates possible compromise of arterial blood flow, which is a surgical emergency. Elevation may help with swelling, but does not confirm blood flow. Heparin is not administered through a new fistula, and warm compresses are not used this early post-op. Strategy For post-vascular procedures, NCLEX emphasizes neurovascular checks, check pulse, temperature, color, movement, and sensation. This assesses circulation and viability. 70. A client with nephrotic syndrome is at increased risk for which complication? A. Hypernatremia B. Pulmonary embolism C. Hyperglycemia D. Acute pancreatitis Answer B. Pulmonary embolism Rationale In nephrotic syndrome, large amounts of protein are lost in the urine, including antithrombin-3, which is a natural anticoagulant. This hypercoagulable state increases the risk of deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism. Clients may present with sudden shortness of breath, chest pain, or hypoxia. Hypernatremia and pancreatitis are not typical complications. Hyperglycemia is unrelated unless 